All right, guys. So today we're gonna be reacting to German homes. How the Germans live. Meet the Germans. Very curious to see how Germans leave. We saw some of the other uh, ways Germans leave, but it was more like inside house kind of thing. But here they're gonna show us how Germans leave. Very excited. Make sure you like to subscribe. Let's jump in. Did you know that in German addresses, the street name comes first and then the number, and the postcode or zip code comes before the city? And check out the doorbells, no numbers. Instead, they're labelled with the surnames of the people living there, which strikes me as slightly unusual for this privacy-loving nation. Anyway, for today's episode, we're at home okay. with the Germans. Okay, we already started. German homes come in all shapes and sizes. Oh, that's they also oh have my God, that's beautiful. That was beautiful. Uh... Okay, this is pretty much the regular, let's say, the regular average German house, I would say, or not. German and then you have these. Oh my God, look at that. Wow. That's beautiful. It's like a lot of thought put, in, put into it. In all shapes. Look at that. <laughs> Talk about culture, my God. Today's episode, we're at home with the Germans. German homes come in all shapes. There you go, got it. Wow, look at that. Shapes and sizes. Look at that. Is that a home? That is a home. Wow. They also have. Oh my god. Of pretty logical names. A house at the end of a row of houses is called an end of the row house, or Rhein Endhaus. A house where one family lives is called a one family house, Ein Familienhaus. Large houses split up into several apartments are called Mehrfamilienhäuser, or multifamily houses, and that's the most common type of home here. As I've told you before, Germans usually know the exact measurements of their home in square meters. The average German home is a little over 90 square meters for two people. Five million Germans live in a VG oh, or she has a switch. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, she's part of the Swiss family. Let's go. That's shared accommodation. And only 0.5% of households have three or more generations living under one roof. Cold rent means without bills. And warm rent includes costs for certain utilities and services. Germany has long been a nation of renters. Less than half the population owns their own home. And okay, in some okay, larger let's cities... Okay, let's go there. Let's go there. Let's go. Now, what's the reason you guys don't own home or the majority? Or is it a majority of you guys don't own home, or is pretty much a a very well known culture of just rent? Um, is let's put it this way: here in the United States, you're expected to own home at the end of the road. Now, is in Germany the the opposite? Like you're expected just rent and just you know live your life kind of thing. Let me know what you guys think. Is that drops to a quarter. This is in part a hangover from oh my recent God. history. Yep. During the war, a lot of private property was destroyed, Dang. so rental apartment blocks were built as a quick fix. In East Germany, people rarely had the option of purchasing. Okay, this is East Germany. This is more like a that communist Soviet Soviet style. Look at that. Of course, they put some art in it. We can see down here on the bottom. Seeing their own property and state-owned property was heavily subsidized. These days, some people prefer the flexibility of renting. Germans do, after all, move an average of six times in their life. I move more than that, Ooh. But most people cite spiraling house prices and hefty deposits as the main hurdle to owning their own home. That being said, renting isn't always a particularly cheap alternative. In Munich, renters are shelling out around 17 euros per square meter. Berlin has introduced a controversial- Give me the math on that. Give me the math, I need the math on that. My math is not working right now, so put it in the comment section. Five-year rent freeze to try and get its prices under control. And some people are getting creative, shunning traditional living models in favor of houseboats, camper vans, communal living yeah, projects. Yeah, you know what? Hey, hey, a lot of people are doing that. Even here in the state, they're doing that. They're buying a camp house, beautiful, probably, you know, 60 square feet. Make sure you have a nice king side bed, kitchen, and that's it. Or tiny houses. Ein yeah. Tiny House ist ein kleines Kleine. Häuschen, meistens aus Holz gebaut, zwischen 10 und 20 Quadratmeter yeah. Yeah. auf Rädern, auf einem PKW-Anhänger. Ist aber auch eine Bewegung. Ja, ist eine Bewegung, die vor ungefähr 15 Jahren in Kalifornien. Yeah, man, it makes sense because it's damn expensive. That's why. That's why everything is expensive. Yeah, German. Germany, you, you guys are not wrong to do that. 
Ja, it makes sense. It's just too, too expensive. USA eingesetzt hat. Und wie ist es dann nach Deutschland gekommen? In Deutschland gab es ja schon immer durch diese Kleingärten eine Tiny House Affinität. Deutsche und auch Holländer, die ja sehr viel Camping machen und Caravaning, die haben eine hohe Sympathie für, für kleine Räume. Welche Vorteile bietet ein Tiny House? Wenn wir nicht mehr äh, so viel Platz beanspruchen, können wir nicht mehr so viel kaufen. Ja, wenn mal, alle Menschen auf einmal in Holz Gebäude leben würden, hätten wir nicht so eine CO2-Katastrophe. Und wenn wir nicht mehr in anonymen Hochhäusern leben wollen, sondern eher in kleineren Strukturen, dann ist das soziale Miteinander auch ein anderes. That's crazy, that's everywhere. Everywhere. Man, they have prices of houses. Right now, especially in the United States, because we are printing so much money, so the inflation or the prices of the house goes higher, because the more money you print, the higher the cost, the more taxes you have. In the area, the higher the property is. So, <laughs> I, I, I'm not surprised that a lot of Germans have, you know, has moved to do this because, you know, it makes sense. Anyway, back to the status quo for now. Here are my personal picks for a few things that make a home very German: house shoes, bottled water, sparkling, of course, weird little mini forks for cake. If the cakes aren't mini, then why are the forks? Solid roller blinds that block out every oh, last scrap of light. Oh, yeah. Uh, One of these retro-looking wooden measuring sticks. That's for what? A cellar with caged-off storage spaces. A beloved balcony. That's the most sought-after home feature. Two duvets. Very practical. And unwieldy, squashy, frankly ridiculous square pillows. Newcomers often have a few surprises when they move into their first place in Germany. First of all, don't expect a house or flat to be furnished, even if you're renting. And the biggest shock of all might come when you enter the kitchen. Yep, Why? it's totally normal to take your entire kitchen with you. Oh you my Counters, god, as cooker. a renter? As a renter, for real? As a renter, you have to bring your own kitchen? Wow, that is a new one. Sink everything. One good thing about moving here is that it's a team effort. It's absolutely the done thing to enlist the help of all your friends. The only payment required is beer, pizza, and the knowledge that you'll return the favor. Of course, it wouldn't be Germany without a good set of rules. The small print in a rental contract can include such gems as the exact level of noise you're allowed to make, how often you have to air your flat out, and the requirement to repaint every room a neutral color upon your departure. If you've noticed anything else about the German- You know what's crazy? I like that. That last one, I like that. You know what? I have a saying that goes, you always leave the place that you are better than you took it. You always leave it better. And that, and that alone makes it as a better society. It makes sense. Why, why do it like that? German way of living. Leave me a comment below. Thanks for dropping by. That's the cat. the Germans. That was very good, folks. That was very good. Very nice. Very nice. Um, just to take a couple snips of the video. Uh, it's, I mean, that last one about this one's the most most replay. Why? Things that make a home very German. House shoes. Uh, the shoes. The bottle of water. Bottle of water. Has to be sparkling, of course. I love, I love sparkling water. I told, I told my wife to bring me a Mini one. Weird little mini forks. For mini forks for the cake. Mm, I like that tradition. That's very good. Okay. If the cakes aren't mini, then why are the forks? Solid roller blinds that block out every last scrap of light. One of these retro looking wooden measuring. So what do you guys use that for? What's the purpose of using that thing? I mean, of course, it's a ruler, kind of. That's the name of it, but why, why are you using that? And is that always in a new place when you come in? Or is there like a law that defends having those kind of things? Let me know in the comment section. Sticks. A cellar with caged off storage spaces. A beloved balcony. That's the most sought after home feature. Two duvets, very practical. And unwieldy, squashy, frankly ridiculous square pillows. Is that square pillow good to sleep on? It looks kind of, you have to fold it kind of thing, right? You have to fold it. Make sure you squish it to make sure you have enough fluffing in the middle. 
Newcomers often have a few surprises when they move into their first place in Germany. First of all, don't expect a house or flat to be furnished, even if you're renting. And the biggest shock of all might come when you enter the kitchen. Yep, it's totally normal to take your entire kitchen with you when you move. Really? Counters, That's cooker... That's crazy, I cannot believe that. Man. And so what's the reason, does the building doesn't provide, does the building owner or the building management doesn't provide kitchen? Or what do you guys use to cook? Is an entire kitchen? How, how would you move? Well, I'm guessing you're moving your entire family. Oh, as a renters, I'm a millennial, so a lot of, a lot of my generational contemporaries, they're not buying kitchens. They just move to a rent place, and they already have the kitchen. So I'm just wondering, why is the reason that there's no kitchen, or if it's not needed? Like you have, you probably have something simple. I would like to know. Sink everything. One good thing about moving here is that it's a team effort. It's absolutely the done. Well, because of culture. Culture is very receptive, very healthy, very, very nice, nice people. That, that's always a plus. A thing to enlist the help of all your friends. The only payment required is beer, pizza, and the knowledge that you'll return the favor. Of course, it wouldn't be Germany without a good set of rules. The small print in a rental contract can include such gems as the exact level of noise you're allowed to make, how often you have to air your flat out, and the requirement to repaint every room a neutral colour upon your departure. If I like that one. That one at the end, love it. And the reason I love it is because, again, it's just show you that you always want to do good before you leave a place. Very good. That's a nice way. That's not nice way to just leave it. Uh, you know, I think that's a nice set of rules that some other coaches can just grab and implement it. Like when I when I buy my own house and I have to leave this apartment, I'm gonna leave it spotless, like everything clean, everything you know nice. Uh, it's gonna be smelling good because that says a lot about you as an individual and the fact that that's already in the culture says a lot about German people. Well, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Just let me know. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one.